What is happening to Alaska's waters? Why are pristine rivers and streams turning orange? Hello friends, Jim here. Well, this is uh, something new going on here in Alaska. And if you look at this photo here, it's an aerial view of the rust-colored Kutuk River, which is in the Gates of the Arctic National Park in Alaska. Gates of the Arctic National Park is in the Brooks Range. This is remote area, it's pristine area. Well, this is not looking that pristine, is it? So what's going on? Dozens of Alaska's most remote streams and rivers are turning from a crystal clear blue into a cloudy orange. And the staining could be the result of minerals exposed by thawing permafrost. Finds new research in communications, earth, and environment. For the first time, researchers from the National Park Service, U.S. Geological Survey, University of California, Davis, and other institutions have documented and sampled some of the impaired waters pinpointing 75 locations across a Texas-sized area of northern Alaska's Brooks Range. These degraded rivers and streams could have significant implications for drinking water and fisheries in Arctic watersheds as the climate changes, the researchers said. The more we flew around, we started noticing more and more orange rivers and streams, said lead author John O'Donnell, who is an ecologist for the NPS Arctic Inventory and Monitoring Network. There are certain sites that look almost like a milky orange juice, like, like or, orange uh, sherbet. <laughs> Those orange streams can be problematic both in terms of being toxic, but might also prevent migration of fish to spawning areas. Right? Can be problematic both in terms of being toxic, but prevent migration of fish to spawning areas. And we know what the implications of that are. These are, by the way, uh, these streams here, visible from space, right? O'Donnell first noticed an issue when he visited a river in 2018 that it appeared rusty despite having been cleared a year prior. He asked around, he compiled locations, he took water samples, Basically, the only way in and out in a lot of these ways is the helicopters. The stained rivers are so big we can see them from space, said Brett Poulin, who is an assistant professor in environmental toxicology at UC Davis, who was a PI in the research. These rivers have to be stained a lot in order to see them from space. Poulin, whose expertise is in water chemistry, thought the staining looked similar to what happens with acid mine drainage, except no mines are near any of the impaired rivers, including along the famed Salmon River and other, other federally protected waters. One hypothesis is that the permafrost, which is essentially frozen ground, stores minerals, and as the climate warmed and warms, the metal ores that were once locked up were exposed to water and oxygen, resulting in the release of acids and metals. And the oxygen probably did a little bit of oxidation. And they get released into solution. Chemistry tells us minerals are weathering. Understanding what's in the water print is a fingerprint as to what occurred, said Poulin. The impacted rivers are on federal lands managed by the Bureau of Land Management, 
Fish and Wildlife Service, and NPS, National Park Service, including the Gates of the Arctic and Cobook Valley National Parks. Poulin and PhD candidate Taylor uh, Evinger uh, analyzed initial samples, then collected their own on a trip last August, while others took samples in June, June and July. And they plan on getting more samples this coming summer. Some samples from the impaired waters have a pH of 2.3 compared to the average pH of 8 for these rivers. So from a little on the alkaline side to extremely acidic conditions. The, the great reduction in pH or the increase in uh, acidity enables precipitation, excuse me, enables dissolution of the minerals where they easily go into solution. So the sulfide minerals are weathering, resulting in highly acidic, corrosive conditions that release additional metals. Elevated or high levels of iron, zinc, nickel, copper, cadmium have been measured. We see a lot of different types of metals in these waters. Evan just said one of the most dominant metals is iron. That's what's causing the color change. Now, as it turns out, satellite images have seen the stained waters going back to 2008. The issue is slowly propagating from small headwaters into bigger rivers over time. So here is an aerial view of the Kutuk River in Alaska's Gates of the Arctic National Park, and you can see the orange staining there. This blue here, that's what it's supposed to be. And we see these uh, little green areas, we got some mixing going on. In fact, if you look right here, that's kind of the boundary. So you got some mixing here, and probably some uh, horizontal shearing, lateral shearing uh, taking place in the, as the water moves about. Definitely non-laminar flow, let's put it that way. So this is year two of a three-year grant where the research is trying to find out what's happening. They're trying to also assess the risk uh, that this poses for drinking water and uh, fish stocks. The problem is growing. It's impacting the habitat. It's impacting water quality and other ecological systems. It's turning healthy areas into degraded habitats with fewer fish and invertebrates. Right? turning healthy areas into degraded habitats with fewer fish and invertebrates. If rural communities rely on these rivers for drinking water, they need to treat these waters. It's not safe. As well as any f fish that they harvest could be affected. There's a lot of implications. As the climate continues to warm, we would expect permafrost to continue to thaw. And so wherever there are these types of minerals, there's potential for streams to be turning orange and becoming degraded in terms of water quality. Scientists from Alaska Pacific University, Colorado State University, University of Alaska Anchorage, UC Riverside were also con contributors to this research. I I'm kind of reminded of an incident Oh, I think it was several years ago of the, what happened uh, in the Durango, uh, Colorado area. Uh, the Animus River um, turned orange. Now, uh, you've got, uh, for example, up in Silverton, those are mining areas. So it probably was due to the leaching of minerals from uh, mine locations. But uh, I remember in seeing in the news that the river was orange and uh, you know, people were told to avoid uh, using the rivers, you know, like you know, swimming, kayaking, what have you, and definitely uh, don't go fishing in there. 
Uh, I don't recall offhand um, how long it was like that, if it cleared up, what have you, but I do remember the several years back uh, the Animus River in the Durango, Colorado region um, turning orange. So let's see, uh, this is from UC Davis. Let's see if uh, we can play this little video here. Okay, um, we, due to copyright issues, I can't show the video nor the audio. I will link the URL in the description and comment section so you can listen to what the scientists say. What we are looking at here is you, you can see the discoloration in the water. You can see the effluent uh, moving through. I mean, look at that. That's just absolutely uh, incredible. It's not that ain't how it's supposed to be. And these aerial views of showing all the discoloration. You know, got some, you see the, uh, you can see the discoloration in the water there. There's some scientists in C2, uh, you know, doing it, conducting the research. And this map here will show the locations of all these, uh, uh, so far, affected uh, areas. All these little dots represent study sites. Anectuvic Pass is right there in the gates of the Arctic. That's what the water's supposed to look like, that nice blue. Here you can see the permafrost thawing and melting away. More discoloration. I mean, look, look what's already uh, doing, what it's doing to the rocks. The definitely staining of the rocks. You can see where it's mixing. Right there, there's, there's the uh, where it's mixing. Some instrumentation taken, uh, measuring the parameters. Is uh, looks like an Arctic char. Probably taking a testing out its health or something. More aerial views. Look, I mean, look at that. This is uh, incredible. Absolutely incredible and very, very disturbing and, uh, and alarming. You know, this is, uh, what, this is what field work is, is all about. You know, we're right here in the Brooks Range. It's all part of the Brooks Range. Field camp, done my share of those. Water sample, okay, water's not supposed to be that color. You can see a bottle of samples there, probably will take it back to the lab for uh, analyses. And uh, more thawing permafrost and melting permafrost, all the ice lens and so on. This kind of gives you a an idea of the distribution of uh, the permafrost. Okay. So here, here's the Brooks Range. Right, and uh, give you an idea. This is the Yukon River down here. Okay, here's the village of Fort Yukon, thereabouts. This here's the Chandelar River. Takes you up to Arctic Village, uh, you know, which is a, a, a community up that way. And basically, in this region. We have discontinuous permafrost, which is a mix of frozen and unfrozen landscape. And the further south you go, the less and less uh, frozen uh, landscape that you will encounter. You start getting up, you know, towards the foothills of the Brooks Range and all the way to the North Slope, right? This is the North Slope, okay? Um, Nome is over here. Okay, Prudhoe Bay is over here, Utkiapik is up this way, and you get where the ground is basically pretty much frozen. And the permafrost in, th in these regions can extend several hundred meters down, whereas here it, uh, it might be, again, depending on location, it might be tens of meters. 
and so forth. You usually get more of a, a seasonal thaw layer in this region, more so than here. So uh, once you get on the other side of the Brooks Range, this is basically tundra. It's just tundra and you're not gonna see a tree. <laughs> in fact, uh, right above the T in the permafrost, right about there, that's Attigan Pass which is uh, in Attigan Pass as a sign saying, this is the last tree from here on in. And of course, this is the Arctic Ocean up this way. Uh, Canada's over here, so forth. So um, this, this kind of gives you an idea of the distribution of uh, the permafrost. And uh, so there's a lot of potential thawing to take place here that's causing the leaching of these minerals to discolor the water, not to mention the methane, the CO2, the nitrous oxide that gets released as the, the, the ground thaws out. Okay. Okay, just uh, continuing on is a researcher you know, working the site, collecting samples. You know, probably doing some preliminary measurements. I mean, look at that. Look at that orange water. More aerial views. That's what it's supposed to be. Not that. You can see where it's mixing. You can see the inflow, inflow there. That's just nuts. Absolutely alarming. Um, it's it's mind blowing. So here is yet another ramification of what humans are doing to the planet. This is another impact, another effect of all the warming we've caused the planet so quickly, so much, in such a short period of time, at such a high rate. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Very alarming. And distressing. Until next time.